So I'm working inside of Studio One, and this music is for TV or commercial. So this is what I came up with. So this piano is coming from X-Band. I love it. Format control piano. And my drums is coming from Machine. So basically, um, a little breakdown of everything that I've done. Um, so I told you about the piano. I told you where the drums is coming from. And by the way, the drums from Machine, I'm using the the um, the Machine 2.5.6 or 0. .4, I believe, one of those. And uh, yeah, that's them things, man, them drums coming in kind of hard and I love it. And what I did to it was I put a compressor or a fat channel on it to um, kind of get it to knock a leak even, e even harder. There's a fat channel here on it. And I turned on the limiter just so it won't go past a certain point and boost the, the lows on it just a tad bit and gave it a, a little bit of crisp on a high end. I uh, have the compressor on just so I can knock just a tad bit harder. And, uh, of course, like I said, I have the limit on there all the way up just so, you know, to give it that give it that punch or whatever. So um, so basically, um, I did a lot of sound design in this as well. Some some sounds that I, I came up with just by tweaking effects or whatnot. So my strings is coming from contact. So, um, the cool thing here is I have everything pretty much packed in folders. And to me, that's very important to have everything packed because uh, it just, you know, it condenses everything. So, if I need to bounce these down as stem, I could say strings, my drums, then this is my, my vocals all of my Vox type stuff. And uh, these other elements are like by itself. Then I got my piano. Then I got my pads. So I got different things going on. I immediately went to the Alloy 2 here and, and put a, a Bellywood strings effect on here. And I probably went to the transient and played around with it. Gave it less attack. Um kind of played around and adjust that or whatever because it it wasn't doing what I needed to do at, at first and but I just made a, a quick adjustment and it, it it knocked it out of the park like quickly. So back to the strings. Um Native Instruments did something pretty awesome. They changed the design and made it really cool with contact. Contact looks cleaner. It looks sexy. You know? I'm like, man, they changed it, you know, the knobs look different. The, the faders and this is it's just pretty cool like I like this this is dope and um I don't know if this was before but now nah, I think well maybe you could have seen this but you can see the um the key the the key uh the key switches down here now I think you could have seen it before maybe I wasn't paying attention but you 
you, as you can see where the red is, now you can key the, the you can see the key switches, which means you can switch between different articulations. Um, anyway, so basically, I have a cello, I have string, violin, viola. According to the way that they're supposed to be paired, I have a chart. Um, if I can find it, this chart here. I follow this chart. So I pair my, my violins to the left, my violas to the, you know, slightly to the left, like probably like, um, I don't know, like 10, 11 o'clock, somewhere around there. And then my violas, probably like 1, 2 o'clock, somewhat. And um, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I had any cellos. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't use any cellos here. But if I did, it would be more so far to the to the right. So so that's what I did there. And those are staccatos. Um so there's my strings there, most of my staccatos. And then I have a riser here like a boom sound and something like that, but what I did was I bounced it in place. And the reason why I bounced at the place is I started to see a boost, a spike in my CPU. And um, so you got to start bouncing things in place. Because these plugins get enormous. So that's my boom right there. Right? Sounds dynamic. Like it's just all. Oh, it's awesome. And then here's another one here. And with this one, this one was a little bit different because it started out like really soft and then it jumped like really high. So what I had to do was it adjust the clip here. So... You know, I kind of, you know, made an adjustment to the to the clip and got it like this. And then it matched with this, with the uh, the high impact power boom right there in that section. So, um, you know, sometimes you just got to do, do what you got to do to make things happen. So I have my, my strings, staccatos. Now, so for my voices or my choirs or my my ha or or my 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 chants or whatever you want to call them, those were a challenge. I did several things to get the sound to sound like that. It, I just kept building, and um, what I did was I used Excel. There were some voices inside of Excel, and I just bounced them in place. So that's where most of those are coming from. So this is what happened here. This was a sound that came from Omnisphere or Excel. I can't remember exactly where it came from, but a lot of bouncing in place is, is what happened. Yeah, so I, you know, it was just one of those things where you just kind of bounce things in place and then here. It sounds generic right now. But once you start putting them together, it makes a whole lot of sense. Like this is another one, I think. I need to add this in here. Yeah, so. Right. This was another um, 
voice thing in there and I just thought it would be pretty cool as a like a swell type thing sound like men swelling into an inner effect or something like that and so that is what created the break right here right so now here's a trick you know <laughs> Here's the trick. Like, I found uh, a symbol, and it didn't, like, extend um, as long as I needed. It cut out really quick. It cut out too quick. So what I did was, here's the trick. Here's the trick. I think it was this one. I, I, I doubled two of them, actually, to get it that... that Okay, so that's the this, the the um, the symbol we 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 are talking about right now. So let me let me um, deactivate the the send to the reverb. This is what it sound like. It cuts out, right? It just totally abruptly cut out. Like really. I need that to, to sustain. I could have found the, a symbol just like that to, that would sustain all the way through, but I didn't feel like doing that. So, like, I just knew what to do. So, if I put the reverb on, see, you turn the symbol down enough and then bring up the, the reverb. That way, it could kind of like give you that extension sound. So, let, let me show you what it sounds like now. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me bring this back just so I can just smoothen into it. Look. You hear that? It sound like it sound like it never chopped off like that because of the reverb. And the reverb that I'm using is open air. This is a stock plug-in from Personas. And um, um it was a 250 hall, so it's the large hall, it's a 250 hall. And what I did was I um I dialed backwards the the pre here because the I mean I'm sorry the pre delay was like somewhere around here and then it so it would have sounded like this. You know, I didn't want that. I wanted it to be like immediate, you know, immediate reverb. So that's what I did there. Pretty cool stuff. Um, just wanted to show you this right quick. Like, is the lead, like, I thought the lead was, I wanted to do something different. So, there was uh, this crazy sound in Omnisphere, and I just took it and I put a red district on it. Yeah, this is without it. Well, I had to turn it down. But, yeah. Add it with this. And then... Um, add a piano. No, this one here. Right, so... So, speaking of the piano, what I did with the piano was it started out with this with this soft, mellow sound, you know, sorrow type thing. So, um, what I did was I went from like this, mm, you know what I mean, this subtle, like, look out the window style. But I know, I knew that I wanted to bring it up a tad bit. So what I did was, I put some automation on it. And um, so what I did was, I came here to my piano roll. So right here is a little soft. As you can see, you can see, you know, 
somewhat where the the volume on each note is is like somewhere in the 64 60 50 20 50 60 um db in volume you know in that range or whatever to give it that you know that nice tone but then right here as you can see when we get right here everything picks up or it gets a little louder like now it's like it's time to go to work because we're at the end and so what i did was i brought up everything in volume kind of bang and but what I did was I brought down the volume of the track. So instead of doing it, start instead of automating the volume itself, I use a mix tool here. That way it won't affect my mix when I'm, you know, when I need to adjust the piano, the the actual volume. It won't it won't affect that at all. So Now I sound like I'm kind of banging on the piano and trust me it gets loud so I had to decrease the volume which retains the the tone the tonality the the energy the attack but just bring it down so it can still fit in the mix like before so you know what I, it sounds like it's like a straight line right now and that's because we did that adjustment here so you can see my gain here just kind of jump so I did a, a, a just about a 15 negative 15 dB decrease there in volume. So that's what I did there. And uh, also in the break area, because a lot of things, a lot of my sounds are heavy reverb. You want like if you're doing things like that, you, you want the natural reverb to decay naturally. You know what I'm saying? You want the reverb to, to decay naturally. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and, and, you know, the natural uh, natural de de uh, decreasing needs to occur. Because if, if you do it too fast, it starts to sound like you... I, what I tried to do was not make it sound like I, I wanted to hurry up the tail end of it. So, But I am speeding up the tail end because the reverb is way too long so what i had to do was it's a good thing i put all of my sounds within groups because i can achieve this by just putting i put a mix tool on here as well and i achieved the same thing here you know the automation and just kind of curved it You know what I mean? Kind of curved it so that it sounds, you know, close to natural so that everything else can come right back in. I did it again here. But this time it's like a like an L shape. And I did it again here for my pads. So. That's that was the whole goal as far as like the automation aspect of it. And for what we're doing here, what I need to do is add this again. I need to add another derivative of this track. So I'm going to do a short version and the, the sweet thing about about um Persona Studio 1 is I can do stuff like this, and when I get ready to bounce down everything, I can um, EP start. Yeah, I can. I can. Um, let's change this. Okay. Okay. What I was trying to say was I I can. I can make derivatives and when I bounce everything out, then it bounces down all at the same time. Like and then it'd be two different or two two separate tracks or it can be one all the way through. It's it's crazy, right? But it it works. It works. So so for what I'm doing here, so this is the second one.
so I can just totally take this one out. I take that and bring it back just a tad bit. So the goal here is is to make it quicker. I'm gonna make this faster. So this is like the second derivative of what I did. So I have a long version. So that I call it, you know, LP, the long the long play, and then I have the shorter the shorter version. Just in case the um the um the user don't want don't want it as long as I made it. You know what I'm saying? Cool. So now when I bounce, let me show you guys this. So when I bounce it down, again I'm gonna fix the drums because I'm not done with the drums, and then I I, I actually got to put a a um. I'm gonna put ozone on it to to give it that that polished sound. Um, but basically, just to show you guys this before I end this video, uh, when you bounce everything out, you can tell Studio One to bounce down everything between starting and end. Because what I'm gonna do is have I'm gonna I'm gonna do a long thing, you know, so it so they can hear it all in one like one take. You know, listening to the preview. But uh, when they get the files, this is what they will get. They will have the first one, which is the long play, and the second one. But when I do this, I don't have to come back and do it two different times. I could do it all in one take and be done with it. So I can say between each marker, you know what I mean? And that will pretty much knock it out. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show you guys. This will be up and available on um audio jungo um so i'm i'm starting to do things on there now and so you know you guys looking for a, a corporate a corporate sound and commercials and stuff like that you can find me on there so i'm kind of building my library specific for that that type of stuff so yeah um look me up kevin ellip um yeah appreciate you guys watching the watching the videos music is art you the artist paint your picture